Mr. Blackwell, I served 14 years in the House, and this is my 26th year in the Senate. This is the first time I've ever chaired a committee. And you say, Durbin, what were you waiting for? <laughs> I was waiting for seniority. And sometimes it smiles upon you, and sometimes it doesn't. But I was lucky, because this was the committee I would have chosen above all others to chair. I think the Senate Judiciary Committee has a storied history, most of it distinguished, and has been at the center of the biggest debates of our time, as it should be. You won't be surprised with what I'm about to say. Hardly a day goes by with any hearing, considering any matter before the committee, that the issue of race does not become part of the conversation. Yesterday, we talked about the untimely death of so many law enforcement officers in the line of duty. It was heartbreaking because I've attended the funerals, as other members have, of these law enforcement officials, and they gave their lives for us in the line of duty. The, the day disintegrated into a debate about race, Black Lives Matter, defund the police, all of the slogans which we know are part of the conversation on race in America today. You have done many things in your professional life, but there's one that distinguishes you from all others in the uh, decision to be the prosecutor, the special prosecutor in the Chauvin trial in Minnesota. Uh, it was an awesome responsibility, and from my point of view, I think you handled it professionally. And I couldn't have asked for a better uh, administration of justice in that courtroom from what I could see as an outside observer. I will tell you, though, I think you understand better than anyone else that that moment, that nine minutes and a few seconds, when Derek Chauvin took the life of George Floyd on video is an image I'll never get out of my mind, never. I'll see his face forever, as I saw the face of the little Vietnamese girl running after the napalm. It's going to be there forever. Give me something that's hopeful on the issue of race, because you've seen the worst parts of it in our nation. Give me something that gives me hope that we will get behind this and be a better nation for it. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. It, it, it is my view, and it was uh, a feeling that I had coming out of the, the Chauvin trial and, and uh, listening to all of the comments uh, I heard and the emails I got and interviews I was involved in. Um, I, I came to this conclusion and feeling that uh, that the issues as Americans uh, that unite us, the things we care about, are greater than all of the different issues we find to divide us. And um, that I saw this sort of groundswell um, across the board. Um, from, it didn't matter political spectrum, race, uh, gender, uh, where uh, people felt in, re in response to some of the divisiveness at the time that, that we are better than this. Um, that uh, you saw, for example, uh, those who were standing up for the notion of e pluribus unum from the many of us won uh, following the, the Chauvin trial. Uh, it wasn't like the 60s where you may have seen a number of audiences were overwhelmingly African-American in Minnesota. I wouldn't say it was. It was, it was people from all races, colors, persuasions who, who stood up um, to be a part of this uh, uh, experiment to, to improve, to make America better. It inspired me to want to continue in this trajectory of service, uh, this time toward the bench. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to have been able to serve uh, in those ways, including in Chauvin, um, but not like to take that service um, in a different form of service, fealty to the law, um, to, uh, to the federal bench. Let's go directly to the issue. Chauvin was found guilty. He's serving time for it, at least 20 years as I remember. And the question is, what do you think about law enforcement, having been part of one of the most celebrated, I don't know if celebrate is the word famous, is a word, I guess. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm struggling to make sure I put it in the right context. Uh, one of the most well-known trials of a law enforcement official and finding being the prosecutor who found him guilty. What is your attitude toward law enforcement and police in the United States today? Senator, I, I think in some ways the law enforcement were the heroes of that trial. Um, I myself am a former police intern with the Menlo Park Police Department. Uh, my little brother is a retired police sergeant. You saw in that trial uh, the men and women from the Minneapolis Police Department who testified 
um, who testified and talked about the bad policing that we saw and what happened to George Floyd. They stood up and spoke out against bad policing as in the best interest of good policing because the good police, and I think most of them are good, they honor the badges, um, they, they do their jobs with honor. Uh, those police officers don't, in my view, deserve to be tarnished by the behaviors of those who don't honor the badge. And when I saw Chief Arredondo stand up, when I saw all the other officers stand up in that trial, there wasn't an ounce of daylight between me and them and standing up uh, for the best tradition uh, of police who honor that badge, who take their public service uh, seriously. Thank you.